Stuff. Hello, and welcome back to the Stone Forge Studio broadcast. My name is Philip Gibson, and I am joined here with Ross, one of the developers and a very important part of this whole process of getting this Kickstarter of Rifts Between Savage Worlds off the ground. Uh, so, Ross, first, tell me about your history uh, in game development. You know, where did it start oh, wow. for you? <laughs> well, uh, it started when I was a kid. My dad bought me the uh, Red Box DD uh, box set from. Uh, Steve Metz or, uh, yeah, uh, Metzner, the Metzner box set. And uh, he said he played it in college and he wanted me to learn how to play it. And I did, and the rest is pretty much history. I got into working professionally in uh, 2000, so I've been doing this for about 16 years. And I've been lucky enough to work with some really big companies like Fantasy Flight Games, Games Workshop. I've been able to work on some really big projects like uh, Star Wars Age of the Empire, The Lord of the Rings. Um, and recently I've gotten into uh, video games the last few years, doing a lot of writing and development for those. So you know, pretty much games are my life. Okay. Uh, so what specifically has been your role in this development process? Well, I like to say that I'm a project manager. Uh, Sean is really the lead, develop, uh, lead designer. I've been the kind of the developer. I've been sort of uh, setting out you know, the vision for each book, the bullet points, the page counts, the art direction. Uh, I'm involved in a lot of different aspects of, of the, uh, the process, but I also got to write uh, a big chunk of the, uh, the Game Master's Guide, and I got to write some small pieces for uh, the rest. And we, we, we've been involved, uh, I've also been involved in a lot of the decisions about some of the design points like the juicers and things like that. So it's, it's very collaborative, but definitely Sean does the lines work of the design, and I just kind of support him with the organizational side. Fantastic. Well, what's been your favorite part of this project so far? Oh my gosh. Campaign? Probably the, my favorite part is meeting all the really awesome Rifts fans who have come up to us and say thank you. We've been wanting to get into Rifts, uh, and, and people who are loving Savage Worlds and want to combine it like peanut butter and chocolate with Rifts and Savage Worlds put them together because you have this great setting and a great rule set. Uh, so really it's, it's been kind of meeting and, and uh, getting to know this community of gamers uh, that have been really supportive. You can look at our Kickstarter numbers and see that we have a huge grant level of support uh, for this project and it, it just it humbles me, man. It makes me really proud to be uh, involved in it. Wonderful. Um, any sort of difficulties or things where you're kind of scratching your head along the way? Well, it's fair to say this is the most challenging project that Sean and I have worked on. Uh, there's a lot of things to get right, to make a Rifts game right, and we spent a lot of time chewing over a lot of different ways to approach various elements in the game, like mega damage, like uh, the way the juicers work, that the way the, uh, the iconic frameworks, as we're calling them, which is what uh, Rifts fans will know as OCCs and things like that, working out races, working out how cybernetics and things. Basically, there was a lot going on in these uh, different moving parts that came together to build this uh, Savage Rifts game because it's, as Sean likes to say, Savage World's taken to 11. And that means we've pushed the envelope on the game system quite a bit. Uh, you know, in a lot of ways, it's been really good because we've learned an awful lot about how uh, Savage Worlds can be, uh, can reach that heights. Uh, but it has been very challenging along the way. Can, to pick an individual thing would be really, really hard, but I think I've already said some of the mega damage, juicers, uh, and the kind of frameworks being the biggest. Okay, I did notice, uh, and I, I know that a D20 is sort of iconic in, in Dice World as That's far right. as all role-playing games are concerned. We didn't use that, and I kind of wondered about that, but I was like, man, I don't know enough about this. I saw in the chat, though, somebody asked about using a D20, and everyone was pretty much unanimously said, do not do, uh, because it just breaks the game. Would you would you agree with that? Uh, well, I, I, I would definitely recommend against using a D20 for a stat rating or anything like that, but in Savage Worlds and Savage Rifts, D20s are extensively used to roll on tables, okay. like extent for, for random events and things of that nature. Uh, D20 is, is really good for re representing a, a large range of uh, results. But for, uh, yeah, the game is, is designed to work uh, mechanically for things that a player character would do between a D4 and a D12 with modifiers on top of that. So yeah, recommend the D20 just for the tables. Okay, it's just sort of, sort of some random things. Um, were there any balance issues uh, along the way? I mean, I'm sure there were, but anything that just sort of stood out? Well, like I said, I mean, uh, I'm a long time Rifts fan. I, I've been playing Rifts for 25 years. Long time. Uh, so definitely balance was a big thing on our minds when we were working on this game. and. We did, as I mentioned, we talked about a lot of things like the Iconic Frameworks. One of the things that was challenging about the Iconic Frameworks was taking them from Rifts, translating them into Savage Worlds, and doing so that made sense both for the Savage Worlds style of play, which is Fast, Fun, and Furious, 
but still kept the flavor and kept the the you know the iconic uh, presence of what it is, the essence of what that is from the riffs uh, game. And there was a challenge in that because again the paradigm is so different with Savage Worlds that you had to find a way to make those things all work without stepping on each other's toes. So yeah, there was there was some balancing going on there. Uh, Sean came up with this idea about using the hero's journey to represent uh, a way to balance between uh, different types of characters. So, uh, for example, tonight's game I was playing a Mars character, which stands for mercenaries, uh, adventurers, rogues, and, and science scholars. I, think. I forget what the S stands for. But basically, it's uh, it is the, the characters that are not an iconic framework. Okay. And one of the ways you balance them against an iconic framework is the framework. An iconic framework has tons of things in it. Right? And the Mars is, is just kind of a, a build your own using the South World system. So the way you balance that out is there's uh, the Mars guys get rolls on a special table called Fortune of Glory that the, the iconic firms don't get. And they get uh, you know more starting experience and things like that. So so bringing in a Mars character, as you saw tonight, absolutely puts them on the same playing field as someone who creates an iconic framework, which has a ton of stuff built into that already. Got it. Um, I, yeah, I could, I could see that, that even though, you know, judging by you guys' talk, that the characters were very different in the way that they came about being and sort of the balances that went into that, nothing felt like it was extremely out of no. place or the red mage of the table. No, no, no. I could, I could play any, any risk concept I can play using Mars, and I will be very... Uh, very functional at the table. I can play the Vagabond, which is basically a hobo with a shotgun. I can play a wo the Wilderness Scout. Actually, if you ask Sean, the Wilderness Scout is one of the most deadliest characters he's seen on the table. So absolutely, this, this thing works. Uh, tell me about the development of the GM screen and some of the stretch goals uh, challenges that you faced. Right, with the GM screen, I didn't work on the GM screen itself, but I did work on the adventure. Oh, okay. I got to write the adventure, which is called uh, Guarded Town Gambit. And uh, the fun thing about that is I wanted to build an introductory adventure that would be great for Savage Rifts players that puts them right in the heart of the action. So in Garden Town Gambit, you get a real sense of the major themes and conflicts that are taking place in Rifts North America. And it places you, as members of the Tomorrow Legion, square in the, the, the crosshairs of that conflict. So you get to make some pretty interesting decisions, and the story has some interesting twists and turns. But as a new player coming in, after you play Garnet Town Gambit, you will have a great idea of what's going on in Risk North America and why it's important to be a hero under those circumstances. Fantastic. Um, and tell me about the Tomorrow Legion. That was something you mentioned earlier, and I actually don't know what that is. So uh, this is a thing that Sean and I came up with for specifically for Savage Rifts. Uh, basically, the Tomorrow Legion represents a, uh, a group of people that are working together to try and help. Uh, the folks that are caught in between. There was this major war called the Siege on Tolkien, and there's refugees that are flooding south uh, through this area. Uh, and we thought it would be interesting to specifically pick a geographical spot that has a lot going on. So we picked uh, Northern Arkansas so, so players can get involved with the Coalition, they can get involved with the Federation Magic, they can get involved with the Black Market, they can get involved with uh, some of the great and iconic places like Murktown and, and Kingsdale. Uh, so we picked that spot and then the Tomorrow Legion became about as a way to give Game Masters and players context. Who am I? What am I doing? And why? And it's very easy with the Tomorrow Legion to set up a game and get it running and the Game Master can just say, okay, the Tomorrow Legion wants you to do X, Y, and Z, and you can get going without needing an awful lot of time to set up and say, well, we all met in a tavern and an old man hired us to go fight a dragon, right? So it's it's just a, it's, it's a great way to contextualize, get everybody on the same page and get moving and get right into the game right away. It expedites that. Right. It's not, it's not mandatory. Like, if you don't want to do that, you can totally do, you can go do all the things that Rift does. Uh, but for Savage Rift, the Tomorrow Legion is our way our interface and our, uh, uh, our sort of default approach so that everybody knows kind of the, the general uh, the general idea of what you're supposed to be doing. And so. It's exposition cranked up to 11. <laughs> it's, it's, we like to call it the core activity. It's just, it's, just an idea, it's just a way to get into the game and go without requiring someone to give a lot of backstory as to why we're all together uh, with all these different backgrounds and why we're doing the same thing together cooperating without a prior history. Fantastic. Well, Ross, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Today. Absolutely. You thank guys have been great. Thank you guys for watching and supporting us. Uh, we really appreciate uh, Ross answering questions. If you have any other questions, there's still time left in the chat, so please, please post them up. We're going to be answering those questions as they come in uh, and talking casually after. Uh, so go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back with Sean Fanning.
Welcome back. We've got Sean Fan sitting in the interview seat now. Uh, Sean, I, I guess the first question I have for you is, did you have any idea how big this Kickstarter was going to be? We, we knew Rifts held an important emotional role, as well as a cultural role, in, in our hobby. I mean, it, it was a game changer, forgive the pun, when it came out in 1990, and it just opened up the doors to so many really cool ideas. And it was huge back then, and you know our our hobby still has all of those players. They're still out, they're still all out there. Um, it, but you know they moved on. They did two different things. They played different games. Uh, for some, the rules didn't quite mesh as well as for others. I mean, there's a hardcore group of, fan, of, of, of Rift fans for whom the Palladium Rift system is perfect and great, awesome. But we also know there's a whole generation of people who had not played, may have heard of it, may never have heard of it, but needed to hear about this important and really cool setting. And we just, we've known all along that there was a whole other uh, audience for this game. What we didn't know was how many of them there were, and how many of them were so passionate about this that they were going to put this kind of money and this kind of support in, into backing what we've done. So. We suspected we might be somewhere in this ball, you know, somewhere we'd, 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 we'd get a, a, quite a few people. We didn't see these numbers coming. This was really something else. You know, I, I saw just how many people were jumping into the chat just as soon as you uh, posted up that we were going to be doing this here. And welcome to all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. It's clear that your fan base uh, is hungry to see this game in action, is hungry to see it released. Um, so what are you able to do now that that Kickstarter has exceeded the goals that you had originally set? Well, we always knew that this was supposed to be a game line. Now, a lot of people are... So where, where are you going to go next? And is there a big announcement? So like that, there's something happening right when the Kickstarter ends. You'll see. Trust me, you'll see. Um, as far as announcements, though, just let me be clear. We've said all along. This is nothing new. There's more books coming. We're already plotting, planning. We've got a list of them. You know, Kevin wants to see more books get published for this. He, this is not going to be a three and done thing. Uh, never was never meant to be that. We never meant for it to be that either. We just there's too much awesome material there. A lot of things that people have been saying. I really want to see this. I really want to see this. We are paying attention, right? And we did save some really awesome stuff for future books. So all those things like, if I don't see this, you're really unhappy. Well, you'll probably see it. Okay, just I, that's all I can say now. But just, you're going to have to trust us. You're going to get to see these cool things because there's more books coming and more cool stuff to go in those books. And because this Kickstarter was as successful as it was, it really sets the stage for a very robust continuing plan for the Savage Rifts line. And it really just helps the whole Savage Worlds community because there's so much cool stuff coming out of this that's just going to spread across everything else we're doing with the Savage Worlds system. Uh, so we are going to actually ask some more questions. You know, we've got several that people have posted on here, but it looks like we're approaching the 30 second mark. Uh, so no, no, six minutes thirty. Oh, oh, pardon me, it's six minutes. And six seconds. Seconds. Uh, never mind. Then we will continue to ask questions. Apologize for that. Um, so I did see in the chat that people were talking about the board. And I obviously asked you about whether a map and minis were necessary to play, and the answer is no. But it increases the experience. Um, for me, it does, and for people who like the toys, it does. And if you, if, if there's certain things about ranges, right, weapons ranges and, and, you know, the movement scales like that, that do work better if you have a cool map or a cool terrain. And for those of us who love those toys, those rules are there and they really support that. But like we said, it, it's not essential. You can kind of fluff that over. Okay. Um, but if somebody is using minis, uh, now that you've seen how just just how popular and just how supportive the community is for this. Um, have you ever thought about having or reaching out to somebody who produces minis to actually have a mini line? There have been miniatures done for previous Savage World stuff. Uh, Palladium Books uh, is holding on to the miniatures thing because that's the thing that they really want to do. So they've, they've got plans for miniatures. Uh, in fact, they've got plans for uh, figure flats too. Uh, so uh, you know, there's there's things going on from their end that they're going to do. And, you know, this is a very very healthy partnership. You know, we we've been hand in hand with Palladium all along. So they're going to be excuse me, they're going to be producing really cool stuff. They did you know encourage us to do the cool maps. So there are specific maps that we are releasing with this Kickstarter that are for exactly like the touch maps you saw in the game today. But they've got like ley lines and rifts and stuff like that on them. And you know, I'll go ahead and say this. I I use it. Those are all Paizo flip maps. So I highly recommend those. Those are really, really cool. I highly recommend. You know, pre I do pre-painted plastic miniatures because I can get paint for anything. So I mean, you can get those from you know, all over. There's there's cool toy miniatures for everything. So. 
go to your local hobby shop and just buy the crap out of miniatures. If you like to paint, buy the unpainted ones. If you don't like to paint, buy the pre-painted plastic ones. But there's a ton of really cool stuff out there. Also recommend Miniatures Market. Uh, it's a good online store for uh, buying miniatures as well. So that's where, I mean, I get my stuff everywhere. I go to a convention, if anybody sells miniatures, I buy them there. You know, that kind of thing. But yes, Pinnacle does have miniatures for some of their other product lines as well. So go to Peg Inc. P E G I N C dot com. That's the Pinnacle main site. Check out the store. You'll they get miniatures for a lot of settings, which Rifts being the ultimate meta setting, all those miniatures can totally be used in this game. Fantastic. Uh, I did see a question in the chat before we ended, and I don't know if it was actually answered by Clint or somebody else in the chat, but the Dragon and Dog Boy classes, how are you handling adapting them to Savage Worlds? Uh, this is Dragon, Psy Stalker, and, uh, and Dog Boy, and a bunch of other DBs as well. So, um, really, Savage Worlds has got a great system for handling most of those. Those functionally work as... Uh, iconic, well, well as, a, as race creation. So, I mean, we, we, we do most of this. Dog Boys were built on the Savage Worlds, basically the sci-fi companion race creation rules. Um, and uh, same thing for the Size Talkers. And then I just, I came up with some of the cool stuff that you're gonna see when you, you see that. Dragons, they've got a lot of power going on. They're a bit beefier and bigger. So like the Glitter Boy, like the Leyline Walker, like some of these other things, they're better done as an iconic framework. So I'm doing a big package of things and calling it the Dragon Package. And that, so you would take Dragon as an iconic framework instead of the Glitter Boy iconic framework or the Mind Melter iconic framework. So that's how we handle the more higher power concept there. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, what is the relationship exactly between Evil Beagle, P uh, Pinnacle, and Palladium? Well, originally I approached Kevin at Palladium Books about doing this as a Evil Beagle project. Um, but of course, was going to have to involve and wanted to involve Pinnacle in any way they wanted to be involved. And then Shane said flat out, yeah, I really do want to. This is too big. We need to be a part of it. Shane very graciously said, look, let's keep Evil Beagle a part of this stuff. You guys will be the development house. Let's keep you know, the logo involved. I mean, Shane is like a brother to me, and working with him is, is amazing. And he really wanted to make sure that, you know, yes, we, we brought this thing forward. He wanted to make sure that Evil Beagle got to continue to be on stage, if you will. Same thing he did with the 12 to Midnight guys, right? Uh, the guys who did ETU prior to that, you know, uh, 12 to Midnight Pine Rock stuff. So he was more than willing to share the glory, because Shane is not about the ego at all. Shane is about get it done, do it right, make sure everybody's involved. It's all about the team. So Evil Beagle got to be included as part of the team as well as just you know me and Ross working with Pinnacle directly. So it is it is just a, a shared partnership across the board. You know, Palladium is is the licensor, but they have been involved every step of the way. They've helped promote. Uh, you know, they've been they just they've been amazing to work with. And of course they've been involved in like that artwork's right. Let's make a change here so it's closer to what we think the fans want. Uh, you know that that rule's great. I, I explain that one to us. So I mean, it's, it just it's been very very collaborative. So that's really it. It's just been you know one big team. Uh, you know, I uh, like I said, this is my first time playing in a role playing game today, um, and, and I have to say, it, it, for a first time, it might be the best time. Uh, I never have had so much fun just immediately jumping into something that I originally thought was very complicated. You know, if you have ever thought about getting involved in a role playing game, I can safely say that I, I enjoyed this and. And it's never been something that's been a hobby for me before. Yeah, you rocked it out, man. I like you um, you know, once again, uh, we are Stone Forge Studio. If you like the content that we were actually produced for you today, um, please feel free to subscribe to our Twitch channel. We're going to have a lot more involvement with uh, Evil Beagle, with Sean and Ross going down the line. Uh, and you can also follow us on at Stone Forge Studio at Twitter. And you can support our Patreon if you would like to do that so we can bring you more content. And uh, hopefully have better cameras and audio for all you folks, too. I know some people are complaining about the blurry map. Um, thank you so much to Total Escape Games for hosting us here today and allowing us to set up. Yeah, make sure you come on down for uh, Monday Night Savages. We all game here on Monday nights. And uh, thank you so much to Sean uh, and Ross for showing us Savage Rifts today. It was a truly spectacular experience to have that done. Uh, and I think it's immensely worth the investment. Uh, so definitely check it out. If you have not been a backer, uh, well, you missed out. Give it your best roll. Huh. More studies first, not those. We're done. Yep. We're done? You're done. You're, you're, you're backed. Are we done? You're done. It's well, over. There's only one thing left to do.